Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you're new here, I'm Elton, a 50-something year old, undertaking a long-term photography project in my 1996 Heimer. So you can expect to see travel photography, photography and video from historical sites that I visit, landscape and nature photography, wildlife and animal photography from around my travels, and also video tutorials, camera gear reviews, um, and hints and tips of van life and long-term travel. So please do join me and hit that subscribe button. Hey folks, so I am in the process of updating or upgrading my solar and electric system. Um, in the old Heimers, so my Heimers are 1996, so 28 years old. Um, they come with what's called an electro block or EBL. Uh, this is essentially Heimers um, 12 volt distribution system and it also includes the 230 volt AC to DC charger which charges your leisure battery when you're on hookup. Um, now the problem, you know, it's all working completely fine after 28 years, you know, can't fault Heimer for that. However, it is 28 years old and I've upgraded to a lithium battery which means the charging capacity from the EBL is not ideal. It's 16 amps um, DC to DC, and I'm. It's therefore not ideal for for the lithium battery which I've bought, which is 280 amp hour, um, and I might be going to two of those, yet to be decided. So I'm going to. I've installed a Renergy 30 amp AC to AC charger. Sorry, DC to DC charger. Um, which will kick in when the alternator is running, so when the vehicle is running, um, which is going to be delivering 30 amps to to the battery whilst I'm driving. However, obviously I can't have both the EBL and the Renergy charging the battery at the same time. I possibly could, but I'm not sure how that would affect. And, you know, the EBL charger doesn't have lithium-aware profiles for charging, etc., so it's probably not the best solution for lithium. So I'm going to be disabling the internal um, uh, DC to DC charger so that it's just the energy that's going to be charging. Now, there are two ways of doing this. Um, the simplest way is to basically disable um, the D plus wire that comes from the alternator, which eff effectively lets the, the EBL know that the engine is running. Um, the problem with that approach is that it also means that if you have a three-way fridge, uh, the fridge will not run on battery whilst you're driving. Because the, the three-way fridge, or at least the ones in the Heimer, they only run when the alternator is running. You can't run them off a leisure battery, although you possibly could if you rewired things. Um, but it does take a lot of amps to run a, a three-way fridge on, on uh, a battery. So... So that's the mission, is to disable the other option, um, is to go inside the EBL and basically disconnect the Relay 5. Um, I'll, put the, I'll put the diagram for the EBL as a link onto the post below. Um, but effectively, you're going to go into, and I'm going to disable the white wire. And please, I don't actually know what the white wire is. I just know this from research um, that you need to disconnect and insulate the white wire from Relay 5. Right, so let's get cracking. So to remove the EBL, simply connect, disconnect all the blocks, connect pin connectors here, and then the unit just slides out. It's not fastened anywhere. It just slides up along these pieces of wood here and on those rails. So it's just a case of moving all these wires out the way as best you can and then lifting it out just like so but um yeah it can be a bit tricky with these wires i haven't given you a lot of space here to work with so you really got to try and get these over to make space for the unit to come out so as you can see i've taken the ebl out and i've removed the cover they are basically six screws on the top cover and then there are three screws down the side on either side of the so 12 screws in total you need to remove to remove the cover we are then looking and bear in mind this is the ebl 104-2 
um, which seems very similar to the uh, 104-3 that I've seen and I have diagrams for. I can't actually find a diagram for the Dash 2 model for some reason. However, fortunately, as I say, it's very similar to the, um, the Dash 3, which I do have a diagram of. So we're looking for Relay 5, which happens to be the bigger of the relays in the unit, um, which is this one here. And effectively, what we are looking to do is to remove that white wire there um, and then obviously isolate it. And that will then, fingers crossed, disable the internal AC uh, DC to DC charger, which then means it's just be my red energy dot charger that will be um, charging the battery as I'm driving along. So that's that's what we're going to do. We are going to unclip the white wire easier said than done right so with the white cable now disconnected which is the coil or ground cable which i've just found out and uh, just for your reference so once you've got that off, make sure that you tape it up and insulate it so that it can't cause any issues within the unit. Once you've isolated, so insulated even, I've insulated it and also just stuck it to the side of the case there just so that it's not flapping around inside the box. Then you can put the lid back on and making sure that the ventilation grid is over your big coil transformer there. Um, and yeah, just replace all the screws and reconnect it. So, um, there we have it folks, how to disable the, um, AC to AC charger in the EBL. I hope you found that useful. Um, if there's any questions you've got about the Heimer, please feel free to ask in the, in the comments. Um, as you probably could tell from the video, I am not an expert with the electronics. I am just following what I've managed to research and been told by others. So if you do have any questions about general installation of solar panels, chargers, those kinds of things, feel free to let me know and I, I could create a video or something like that if, if you think it's useful. Um, yeah, so I hope that was useful for those Heimer owners out there. Until next time, as always, be safe, be happy, and be kind. Cheers.